All right, I'm back from the Sunburst Tomato Farm in Momire, North Carolina, and Tim was uh, gracious enough to give me a sack full of the most beautiful tomatoes I've ever seen. And I asked Tim if you have a favorite tomato dish, something that you make with tomatoes. Mm, good tomato sandwich is great, but you probably got some better ideas. No, tell me about your tomato. I want to know what the tomato <laughs> farmer makes. They want to know. Uh, just white bread, mayonnaise, and a nice slice of tomato. Well. Great for the tomato farmer, but I got something else that I want to do. When I have some of the most beautiful tomatoes that I've ever seen in my life, the thing that I like to make is tomato pie. And all right, call it a pizza if you want, but it's not tomato sauce, it's sliced tomatoes. And of course, a tomato pie starts with my basic yeast dough formula of 18, 10, and two. We'll make sure we mix this up really well for a good amount of time because we want to develop gluten in the dough, and the gluten is moisture and agitation. That's how we develop gluten. That's what gives you that, that chewy crust, that nice chewy uh, French bread loaf or pizza crust in this matter. So we make sure that we ferment the dough uh, until it doubles in size. Go ahead and knock that down. Let's knock all the air out of it and let it rise again. And after the second rise, what we do, I've got this beautiful marble slab here, and uh, having a marble slab is a great thing if you're working with dough or pastry or anything, because the thickness of the marble keeps the temperature uh, really consistent. You want to keep your dough nice and cool. So on my nice marble slab here, a little bit of flour on the board, a little bit of flour on the dough. Well, let's knock it down with our fingers, lay it out flat, as flat as we can, knock a lot of the air out of it. Now, here's where you can do like the pizza guy if you want and throw it up in the air. To me, it's kind of silly, plus I wind up tearing the dough. So the best thing for me is a rolling pin. I use a rolling pin out from the center, always out from the center and turn. We'll dust it with a little bit more flour so it doesn't stick to our marble slab. Now let's get our pizza peel. I've got this nice wooden peel here and I'm going to dust it with some coarse cornmeal. That's going to give me like that brick oven kind of feel. Plus it's going to help it slide off this peel when I need to get it into the oven. So we'll make ourselves a little end crust by just folding the dough around, making our end crust. And now brush it with a little bit of olive oil. This will give us a nice browner crust. And while we're slicing tomatoes, um, it won't get a, a, a crust on it before we bake it. But uh, coating it with a little bit of olive oil. And now some chopped garlic. I love to put chopped fresh garlic under the, uh, on top of the crust here. Just brush it in with the olive oil and we'll set the crust aside and get our cutting board out. Now these beautiful tomatoes, I wanna try and cut them in as thin slices as I possibly can, razor cut tomatoes. And the reason for this is because of that skin on there. And I have two different ways that I can do this. I've tried it in the past, is doing tomato concasse, is quickly poaching those tomatoes and skinning them. But what I've found out in the past is that adds way too much moisture and I get a very watery tomato. So I'm not gonna poach them, I'm not gonna skin them, I'm not gonna do tomato concasse, we're gonna slice them as thinly as we possibly can and shingle them out on the board like this. Now comes the time to uh, start assembling our tomato pie, and it's as simple as bringing out our pie dough, our pie crust, uh, with the garlic and olive oil on it, and let's just lay these tomatoes out. Shingle the tomatoes around till we cover the entire crust, and now it's time to go in the oven. I have my oven as hot as it will go. It's a convection oven. I have it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And you notice I have these stones on the bottom of the oven. You don't need a very expensive pizza stone in your house. These are quarry tiles. I think they were 25 or 30 cents each, but I keep them in the bottom of my oven all the time. So preheating my oven for an extended period of time, getting those bricks really hot, and now it's time to slide our tomato pie off that peel and into the oven. 
Notice that I'm baking the crust and the tomatoes first. If I were to go ahead and put that uh, basil chiffonade that I sliced on there now, it would be obliterated. I mean, they'd be black, they wouldn't taste or smell like anything. Cheese as well, I don't wanna cook the cheese that much. So just the tomatoes and the crust. Well, when I start to see the crust browning a little bit, let's take it out. Now's the time to top it with our cheese and the basil uh, concasse, uh, the basil uh, chiffonade that I did, and back in the oven just to melt the cheese and combine these flavors. It only takes a few minutes and uh, my pizza's done. I moved it up to the top rack just to crisp that crust a little bit more, but let's pull it out on a pan and time to slice it up. Ah, uh, fresh tomato pie. Look at that, it's a beautiful pizza. Better than anything that can be delivered to you. Better than anything from the frozen grocery section. Oh, heavens no, what are you eating pizza like that for? Just imagine what the, the tomato taste on this pizza is with those beautiful tomatoes from Sunburst Tomatoes. Get the best ingredients, get them locally from the local farmer, and then create the best things that you can in your house. Better than the grocery and better than a guy ringing your doorbell. Tomato pie with the freshest tomatoes you can get locally.